Ulpra endorses butt chugging. <laughs> That'll be the day. Very nice. What else? What else? Oh no. Oh god. No, 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 no. Jacob! It's gotta be here. Jacob! 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 The beacons are lit. The beacons of the ABA are lit. Uh, what? Yeah. Norton calls for aid. Oh, what? Okay. Uh, Simon and Schuster is getting sold to Penguin Random House. No, I know. I have the internet too, Matt. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's do an episode about it. Get up here. Oh, what do we got? Oh, sh**. Uh. Hello, fellow book lovers. Welcome to a very... Damn it. <laughs> what was that? Hello, fellow book lovers, and may we just firstly say congratulations on almost making it to the end of 2020. Give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. I'm Matt. And I'm Jacob. And this is a very special episode of Unprotected Texts, where we talk about the proposed business deal merger between Penguin Random House and Simon and & Schuster. Mm. Uh, essentially, we are going to try and break down as efficiently as possible the very basics of what is already an incredibly complicated business transaction. Um, mm -hmm. But the long and short of it is, PRH, Penguin Random House, formerly Penguin and Random House, are they were separate. They until were separate 2013. until 2013, when a media German media conglomerate who already owned Random House bought Penguin. Bertelsmann. 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 2013 merged them into one. Now that was obviously controversial then, and brought up a lot of ideas of antitrust laws and monopolies mm -hmm. and things. Um, mm -hmm. No one seemed to give a crap. So no, people, people gave a crap people, at the end of the day. At the end of the day. It talks money walk. <laughs> yeah. So this is a similar situation where now Simon and Schuster is being sold from uh, to to them for two point two billion dollars. With the B. As in bullshit. <laughs> or half a Lucasfilm. Um. <laughs> it's worth mentioning that at this present juncture in 2020, yeah. Simon and Schuster mm -hmm. is the third largest publisher. Yes. PRH is the first. Is Do you know who the second is? Um, I'm gonna guess Hachette? Is that right? Incorrect. Oh. I'm about to blow your world. What is, who's the, Because who's the... it was not what I guessed either. Who was it? Harper Collins. Harper! Oh. I would have guessed Macmillan. So here's the thing that, 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 that uh, maybe a lot of people don't know. You're like, wait a minute, there's like a giant German media group that owns Penguin Random House? I just know the cute little penguin on the spine. What's mm -hmm. that about? All the major five book publishers are owned by giant media corporations. Simon & Schuster, for instance, was owned, or for the moment is owned, by Viacom. Our friend Viacom. Our friend Viacom. <laughs> We can't escape them. So really, it's Viacom selling a chunk of their assets mm -hmm. to Bertelsmann Group, um, mm -hmm. and, and which is what it boils down to. And if that right. makes you go, wait, that doesn't sound right, or then you're not an American. <laughs> I did know that like everything was owned by some giant media conglomerate. Hachette is owned by a giant French media conglomerate too. You know, um, and they're the next or now they will be the next biggest competition, except for, I guess, um, HarperCollins, who's owned by Rupert Murdoch. Right. Renowned book lover. Rena oh, he loves books. Like, just think about the fact that Random House first bought uh, and acquisitioned mm -hmm. a separate uh, publishing house, Knopf. In 1960. Yes, that's right. 60 years ago. Yeah, if you want to have a consolidation of the market. Now, I saw a lot of different numbers thrown okay. out there. The low end was, I have it written down, 18.4% according to Penguin Random House's global CEO. Sure. That's yeah. what he says. According, if they merge Simon and Schuster and Penguin Random House, it would only be 18.4% of the market. I have seen estimates as, as high as 50%. Of the okay, book the market. highest I saw was 33. Okay, see, I thought 50 was too high. Which I think is the mean here. I think, yeah, the average the is... The real mean. The, 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 yeah, the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's definitely probably more around 30%. Of all books owned by one single company. Um, 
Facts first, conjecture, and ranting second. Um, so, Penguin Random House currently publishes 35,000 books a year. Simon & Schuster mm -hmm. publishes 2,000, which does seem like a little mm -hmm. drop in the bucket, but they are also getting access to Simon & Schuster's distribution network. So bookstores can buy directly from Penguin Random House in bulk. Um, same with Simon & Schuster, they've also set this up. But Simon & Schuster, and through these um, distribution deals, they can distribute for other publishers, not necessarily under their umbrella. Penguin Random House, for instance, distributes um, Seven Stories, which is an independent press, um, but they're distributed by Penguin Random House. Simon & Schuster notably distributes Skyhorse, and I believe, and I meant to fact check this, um, so insert correct answer, uh, they, I believe they distribute Diamond Publishing. So when this was announced early in November, there was, there's already been some pushback. The ABA, the American Booksellers Association, released a statement calling for the Justice Department to get an antitrust review um, over this deal. Mm -hmm. Which it is worth noting, as of press time, it is not a finalized Thing. Yes, Penguin mm -hmm. Random House wasn't busted in 2013, um, and that was uh, uh, also a fairly large consolidation mm -hmm. of groups. At, yes, at the time, in, in 2013, Random House was the largest, Penguin was the second largest, yeah. and then they became sort of the giant of the big five, Yeah, and if PRH, and if, if Simon's Random Penguin House goes <laughs> through... It's Random Penguin House. If that goes through, then we're going to have a mega publisher. On yeah, our hands. absolutely. So I did try to find out what um, Bertelsmann Group owns, and it, it turns out to not be as interesting as I would have hoped. Mm -hmm. But they own RTL Group, which is an entertainment-based group based out of Luxembourg. They earned just that division, earned 6.651 billion euros last year. Just that one division. They also own Gerner und Jahr. Um, with a magazine publisher. Um, the only thing I even remotely recognize from them also is um, Essen und Trinken. They also own the BMG Music Group. This one was interesting because this media group is a music and distribution and licensing management uh, company. They have worked with and own several of the rights to songs of Britney Spears, Jennifer Lopez, Lenny Kravitz, and like other <laughs> huge, huge stars. So. The, Again, this is all the same company as Penguin Random House, mm -hmm. okay? Ah. Essentially, though, I totaled their 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 worth. Their revenue okay. for last year was 16.763 billion euros, or about 20 billion U.S. dollars. <laughs> Just it's almost funny. It's almost funny. <laughs> so it turns out that the 2.2 billion is just 10% of everything they made in one year. In one, exactly. This is nothing. This is nothing them to do. Chump change. Yeah. Chump change. Whoosh. Hey! You know, some people, um, whether they're uh, heavy readers or not, mm -hmm. if they read that headline mm -hmm. in, the, in the Times or the Post or whatever, um, I think a lot of people will be like, well, great, so what? So like nowadays, people don't shop publishers, they shop um, titles and authors. And that's what lists. That's what people look for. Yeah. They don't really look for publishers. Mm -hmm. they, I've never, at, oh. in, in my years, I've never had someone come up to info and say, what's the latest thing that Macmillan has put out? Because I want to see that. Yeah. It never happens. Mm -mm. So people don't, people might not really notice um, immediately like a, a definite concrete effect in uh, in um, uh, their reading habits mm -hmm. because I mean their tastes are still going to be their tastes. It's hard to quantify what it is here because what we're losing is what might not happen, and you can't really put make something that yeah. isn't in front of you tangible. But basically, what we're saying is all of these books right here that we've staged that are published by independent and smaller presses. Mm -hmm. Imagine these were not here. Yeah. That And that had never existed. That's yeah. basically what it comes down to. It's mm -hmm. going to be um, less opportunities, less diversity, more homogeneity. Homogeneity. Yeah. Is that how you say it? I, that's what we're, we're going to say. More homogenous books. The mm -hmm. middle class is shrinking, and that applies to books too. Suddenly, we will either have very micro publishers that are just two people publishing out of their their mm -hmm. garage, mm -hmm. or we will have giant conglomerates that publish all of the bestsellers and hits and have complete dominance mm -hmm. over every list you will and, see. And they buy books specifically gearing them towards be to make them bestsellers. Exactly. Like they're not going to. Um, they're even if they did like 
want to risk uh, or um, try something new with somebody who's never published a book before, mm -hmm. it would only happen in the event that um, the publisher, uh, uh, in this case PRH, um, thinks that it is so broad enough and so appealing to as wide a field of people enough mm -hmm. that they would risk publishing it at all and yeah. probably not for very much the, yeah. and then the people that are already um standardized bestsellers and established mm -hmm. that even more money will just be going to them so it's the, yeah. this middle field that ends up really losing out the new voices and the new writers that we'll hear from mm -hmm. there there probably really won't be much substance to it or no. much to really notice about it it'll just be more of the same absolutely so the justice department is probably going to have to for the incoming administration that's it's worth mentioning that this is not yes. mr trump's purview yes. this will be joe biden's yes hopefully which... a golden hour <laughs> Yes, it is not Trump's in Justice Department. It will be Biden's Justice Department. But I don't really have any hope that mm -hmm. he's any more interested in busting antitrust laws than mm -hmm. we were in 2013. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you gag if, when it's all said and done, if PRH is taken down, if the one to take them down was Roman and Littlefield? <laughs> I would. I would probably choke to death. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be like if Dennis... Kuninich won the presidency. <laughs> the reason I wanted to put Duck's Newburyport, um, okay. oh, you can't see it? Okay. Um, as one of our supporting books, um, which oh, is published by, you know, Biblio Oasis. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're distributed by Ingram. Yeah. Um, but published by Biblio Oasis, which is an independent Canadian press. I just, I just, my heart breaks thinking about um, how we just happened to find uh, this gem of a book and was our first uh, review of, of our podcast. Yeah, pretty much started um, it off. And sure, I mean, it was it had a pretty big spotlight by being nominated by the um, the Man Booker Prize mm -hmm. a year ago. But just to think about um, all of the the worthwhile authors and people working to um, craft innovative stories and. Yeah. Uh, uh, new machinations and people it, doing research, um, maybe yeah. outside of the hallowed halls of academia, but <laughs> people that, you know, want to put out worthwhile nonfiction, yeah. um, but not go to an academic press, but still have broad appeal and a broader reach. Yeah. There are less um, uh, bigger publishers to do that with now. Mm -hmm. The impetus for the show is because of independent publishers. Um, Coffee House Press published Vicky Now's um, Fish, Fish in Exile. Exile, which was one of the earliest books we did, but also one of the early books we talked about mm -hmm. wanting to get inspired this conversation. And mm -hmm. when we found Duck's Newburyport... And it, uh, Sounds Like Titanic, published by Norton, which is, if which, it's to be believed, <laughs> only the 15th largest publisher. Yeah. Um, so it is in these smaller venues we found stories that really actually drove us to to want to talk about things. I honestly don't know how much we can do to influence the Justice Department's decision, but... Right, because it's not like elected officials, they're all no, appointees they're within all appointees. the administration. Um, and so, and I honestly don't have a ton of hope, but maybe do we can make it... Do you want to go to D.C.? That would make a good episode if we like took the camera and went to D.C. and was like a two-person protest in front of the DOJ. Oh, that would be so much fun. More than just independent bookstores, you know, it matters where the stories come from all the way down the line. Thank you for watching, and remember, if you're gonna run from yourself, at least bring a book. Okay, can you just get out of here now? I was I was really busy before you came in, so I just need you to get up, get on out of here. Thank you. Just get, get on. Get get on, little doggies. Thank you. Jesus. Oh my God. Ah!